So you hear this term thrown around all the time, POTA. What is POTA? Well, if you're brand new to ham radio, POTA is one thing you probably want to try to get into. It's a lot of fun. We're going to discuss that right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Welcome back, guys. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL. I run Ham Radio for Non-Techies, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby for you to get you to study, pass, and get on the air as quickly as possible. So today we're going to discuss POTA. POTA means parks on the air. So what does that mean? Well, parks on the air is basically where you go out with your radio. You go out to a designated park that's recognized by the Parks on the Air organization, and you try to activate that park by getting at least 10 contacts, and in doing so, you get to have fun, you get to learn more about your equipment, you get to learn about propagation, you get to try out and experiment different things, and you have a lot of fun being outside in nature but instead of being cooped up in the four walls of the little prisons we call houses. Uh, so that's the basic gist of it. So how do you do it? Well, what I would suggest is finding a decent HF radio. It doesn't have to be anything fantastic. You can do it with a G90. You can do it with a 7300. You can do it with a, with a 705. You know, just go pick out some kind of HF radio, whatever you've got, and grab some antennas. And you'll go out to a park, and I'll show you here the website here in just a second. Uh, there's certain parks you go out to, and you can go out to the ones around your location and just find a spot out in the middle of the park somewhere, set up on a, on a picnic bench or Bring out a little table and a little tent and, you know, have uh, have a couple little items with you to help make it more fun and uh, safe. <laughs> and just go out there and start trying to make contacts. So let's go and jump into it here, and I will get, I'll get you uh, some more info here. So let's go to the POTA website, and you'll see here we're at parksontheair.com. Now, you can sign up with these guys for free. And you just click on the little login button here if you don't have a login already. And you can uh, sign up or sign in. And this page in particular, I was going to get to this in a minute, but I guess might as well go ahead and tackle it now. Uh, this page here is where you can actually spot yourself or other, people's who hear, or other people who hear you on the radio can spot you. So what you're doing here is you'll set up, you'll go down here to the bottom... Oh, I guess that maybe only works on, it only has that on the, uh, I think you have to be logged in for it to work. Uh, give me one second to log in. All right. So with logging in, yeah, so that, that, that appears now. So when you log in, you can go, and when you have the app on your phone or your tablet, or if you bring a laptop and you have some sort of internet access, you will need internet access at the park to pull this off. So have some kind of a hotspot set up through your phone or use your phone or a tablet that's connected to the internet. That way you can log into this website. You can, you can, it says here, add a park now, click to add your spot. So if I click that, you'll put in your call sign your, and your spotter call sign, or you know, if somebody else spots you, they'll put their call sign here and your, and your call sign. You put the frequency that you're currently uh, transmitting on when you find a free frequency on, on the air. Uh, use your park reference or what park you're at, and I'll show you that in a second. Then you just put down a little comment below, and you have to have a comment down here. So just put anything. Just doesn't matter. Uh, you can put down that you're, uh, you know, POTA on single sideband or your POTA first POTA or something like that. Put it whatever you want. Just have something there, and you click the spot button. What that then does is up towards the top, it'll add you, and this thing refreshes every minute or so. And if you're actually if you're actually hunting for people, say you're at a park and you're you're not having a great great luck getting uh, anybody to, you know, talk to you. If you want to talk to somebody else, you can look up here and it'll tell you like this guy here, W five or W D five J O E. He's on one four two five seven on twenty meter band. He's out of New Mexico and he's uh, activating park four five one six. So you could try to bring him in and uh, you know. If he puts out a call for a QS or for if, yeah puts out a call for CQ, you could uh, come back and say something like okay I five MPL park to park, so because you, you're talking from your park to their park, so you want to make contact with them in that manner, and all you're going to do is give them a uh, you're going to give them a, the, the conversations are pretty quick they're pretty short, so you want to just give them like his signal report he's going to give you a signal report you'll kind of tell each other what your QTH is or your location, and that's the end of that conversation move on to the next person or he'll move on to the next person. And that's basically all you do. 
So you need 10 people, or 10 active or 10 contacts to activate a park on your own, or you can go and hunt other people out through this page on the Parks on the Air website or the POTA.app site. And once you're logged in, you can hunt other uh, hams out there and help them activate their park and do some just do some ham work. Okay, so let's go back over to the actual page here. So the front the front page here of the uh, Parks on the Air site, you can support them if you want to help them out. This is a service they provide, and then donate, donating a little amount of money helps them to uh, keep this thing going and keep it rolling for us. And uh, let's see. This is what I want to show you here, the map of entities. So you click on POTA map, and the first time I got to this, it kind of confused because really no, there's no uh, uh, explanation how to do this. So you'll go over here, DXCC entity, you'll pick United States if you're in the United States, and over here, you'll drop down and pick your state. And since I'm in Texas, I'll grab the Texas state here, and it kind of puts you up in the middle of absolute, oh look, Belton, that's where I was last weekend. So anyway, you can... Uh, Zoom out, and you'll find your area. So for me, I'm in the Houston area here. And the closest park to me is down here. So you look on the map for where you live and find a park that's close by. Anything with yellow dot is a park. You can click on that, and it'll show you, that, you know, what that park is. So in my case, it's Brazos Bend State Park, and the park designation number is K-2992. If you click on More Info, this will bring up a page for that specific park. And what this does, it gives you a lot more information, gives you the references again, where it is, latitude and longitude, uh, you know, tells you it's in the United States, obviously. Um, if it's active, if it's an active park or not an active park, well, when it was first activated and by who, and how many activations and attempts there were on this uh, since that time. Going down here, you can see the people who have activated this park and how many times they've done and kind of get their stats and stuff like that. It's a good little bit of information, lets you know if the park's active, what people are doing, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's what you would do to find uh, little parks around the area. So we're going to go back to here again. And that, that's really it. You just go find, find parks in your area. And around me, I've got a couple few here. And that's the closest one, like I said. It's more out here in this area out near uh, Baytown, and some up in the north area here, up near Conroe, and I think there's one other one. Yeah, Huntsville State Park, and then Sam Houston National Forest. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can go on to the site here. Like I said, parksontheair.com. Links will be in the description for this. Uh, if you need help on getting started, there's a whole section here on signing up for POTA, the rules, FAQ. I mean, it's it's got all the information, references you need to get you started and get you going. So I'd say go get the free membership, log in, or, or you know, get yourself an account, log in. That way you can use the uh, POTA spotter, and you can get your maps and find out where your where your stuff is or where your where your nearest parks are. Uh, POTA scheduler I have not used yet. I guess that's okay. So if you're going to be scheduling an activation, like you're going to go to a park, and you don't really know what frequency you're going to be on until you get there, right? You always got to check for a clear frequency. This thing here allows you to actually uh, schedule an activation. Like, say you're going out to some park tomorrow morning. You can let people know, hey, I'm going out. This is the park I'm going to. And as you're seeing here, people are putting down, all right, I'm going to be on 15 meters, 20 meters, or 40 meters. Come search for me. And I guess once they get there, they'll either spot themselves or somebody will spot them and give you more detailed information for the actual frequency they'll be on. Uh, this guy here actually put down that, so he might either be at that park or he's extremely hopeful. <laughs> Either way, you can have a lot of fun with this. Anywho, uh, so that's the basic gist of how to use the Parks on the Air website and the little apps they have inside to get you out there and get you out in the open air and doing stuff and having fun and, and doing your ham radio. So what methods can you use out there? Okay, so a lot of people will mainly use phone or voice. So you pick out a frequency within the, within the band plan of your license and... Go find a frequency, you know, is this is this frequency and use this frequency and use, go at your call sign, do it a couple times. If you don't hear any feedback, that frequency is yours for the time being. And then you start calling CQ. So when you're doing the CQ thing, you know, there's different methods. I don't think, I think there's, a, there's kind of a standard for it, but I generally, I have a pre-recorded message. My uh, 705 and my 891, which is the two radios I do POTA with, uh, both have an option, option for doing a pre-recorded message. So I'm not sitting there constantly having to go back in and say it over and over and over again. And you might have some time. You might have to sit out there for about 15 minutes and just sit there con consistently calling out CQ. And that can get really, uh, that can be a real pain in the butt if you have to do it manually. So having a, a radio that has a pre-recorded option in it is really kind of cool and uh, very helpful. 
So with mine, I have it set up, and it basically ha I have a little script that I wrote out, and you can just follow something along. Just look online. There's lots of people doing POTA activation. You can kind of hear what they're saying, write it down, practice it, and then you know record it into your radio. But I do something along the lines of CQ Poto, CQ Poto. This is Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima calling CQ Poto on 40 meters. CQ Poto, CQ Poto. This is Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima calling CQ on 40 meters. Uh, and, and just sit, the, and sit back. You don't want to talk too fast. You want to have it so people that are hunting a frequency in that will hear that, realize you're calling CQ for a parks on the air activation, and then respond to you when your transmission is over with. So figure out what works for you, and that should get you going. Now, other methods people use out there, obviously, uh, people do Morse code and C or CW, and that's something you can go out there and, you know, P CW, I've seen a lot more CW on people doing summits on the air or SOTA, which I have not talked about. There is another site, I'm assuming, for SOTA, but this one particularly uh, deals with POTA. Uh, but you can do, you can definitely absolutely do uh, CW or Morse code in a Poda Park and activate with uh, just CW. Some people bring out a whole computer system and set up and set it up out in the park and they're doing FT8. So find what works for you, what you're comfortable doing, what you have the equipment for, and just go out there and have fun. Okay, so I've covered what it is, how to do it basically, and your methods. So what equipment? Well, like I said before, you want to have a radio, a decent antenna, some way to put that antenna up. If you use like a, a little vertical pole antenna, you'll have the stuff for that. If you're going to use a wire antenna, you're going to want some kind of a twine or something to throw it up into a tree branch and have some little weighted thing you can throw up there so you can get the line up in the tree. Um, a lot of guys bring out poles. You can bring out a 20, 30, 40-foot pole out there and stick that in the ground and run your wire up that and run that back to your radio. So you want to have, like I say, you want to have a decent radio. Want to have some antennas, have, have a little selection of antennas. You're going way out in the middle of nowhere and bringing one antenna and relying on that and something goes wrong, you just wasted a trip, right? So bring out a couple of antennas with you. Obviously, coax. Uh, you want to have some sort of a uh, documenting uh, way to document your logs. So either by tablet or by your phone or have a, have a, having a laptop or a miniature laptop out there would be a good thing as well. And actually, I want to talk to you guys real quick. The one app that I use... There's a really killer app that was developed by a fellow ham. And let's go back to my desktop here, and we'll, do, we'll show you what that is. Uh, this is the Hammers app. And basically, it's free. If you're on a, if you're on a uh, Mac or Windows or Ubuntu or, or Raspberry Pi, you can get it for free here. If you get it as an app from Amazon or for Google Play on Android or from the App Store for iOS uh, phones, you'll have to pay it. I think it's like $4.99 one time, and you get support forever, basically. Here's a basic gist of what it looks like. It basically sets up everything for you. You can set up a new logbook, and you can name it whatever you want. So like this guy here named it Fall River, and he put the, the park designation number, K2338. And all you do is you'll go in here and you fill out their call sign. When somebody when somebody responds to you, put their call sign in. If you feel like putting in the, uh, the RST report that was sent and the RST report that was received, you can put that in here. If they're calling from another park, you put their park number in here. Any comments you want here, it'll automatically record the time and the date, and you hit save, and it logs in your uh, your your logbook. Now, another cool feature on here, they don't have it show, they don't show it here. At least I'm not seeing it. There's another section on here down below this where it actually shows a map. It'll show a map of your location based on the info you input for your uh, your POTA. And it'll show a map of all the people with lines going from where you are out to the people you reached, which is really, really awesome. Uh, you can, at the end of the day, when you're done, if you activated the park and you got everything ready to roll, you can actually export this file and send it right over to the Parks on the Air people and have it logged in and get uh, credit for uh, activating that park. Uh, in doing so, if you activate a park enough times, you can actually get awards and you can read this whole page on your own, see what kind of awards you get. Uh, you get different, you know, different awards for activators, and there's different awards for hunters. And I think they also have uh, advanced awards, and they have uh, stuff for activators, and they have stuff for hunters. So, you know, take the time to go to the parksontheair.com website and really look through this thing and kind of get a feel for it. I'm only giving you like a, uh, a, a, like a refresher to really get you uh, involved in it and get you to go out there and actually try it out. It is a lot of fun. I went out yesterday and tried my first POTA activation, and unfortunately, as well, as much as I could hear other people, for some reason, I guess the propagation was just crap, and people weren't able to hear me. 
So that was a little bit disconcerting. I was like, oh, man, I drove all the way out here. I didn't, I didn't, didn't, didn't get squatted. I, mean, I reached one guy, but he was actually running a net, and uh, that really didn't do much for me. So uh, I tried reaching other people doing parks. I was trying to do a park-to-park, -park, you know, communications. And, uh, you know, whatever reason, I guess just the propagation was just crappy. Uh, I had a couple of antennas out with me. I tried my uh, with my Buddy Stick Pro originally, and then I moved over to the KM4 ACK and fed half wave and threw that up into into one of my poles and ran it up into a tree. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't really have a whole lot of luck, and I, you know, I was a little discouraging at first. But I'm I'm gonna get over it, and I'm gonna go back out. I'm gonna do it again. I might go back out today. I, I have no idea. So we'll just see what happens. So going back to equipment, we talked about radios, antennas, poles, having extra, you know. Uh, uh, 550 cord or that that uh, you know the military little middle thin military rope had a little you know about 50 50 60 feet of that with you uh have some sort of a weight if you're gonna be throwing up in a tree if you got a slingshot or whatever you know whatever it takes you to get that wire high up in the air and uh get you rolling um i'd suggest maybe if you don't have a tuner bringing some sort of a antenna analyzer with you or if you do have a tuner don't really you know have to worry about it too much other than that like i said you need to have a uh, laptop or a uh or a, uh, a tablet or a phone, so you can log your log your QSOs on there. Uh, the other things I would think about that you might not think about originally is, uh, you know, if they don't have tables out there, most parks are going to have picnic tables and things like that, but if you're going to be out there for a while, you think you're going to be going out maybe camping overnight or something, bring a little 10 by 10 pop-up tent, bring a little fold-out table and one of those little camp chairs, set up all your gear on, on, your, on your thing and run everything out from the tent and just go have fun. Other things to think about, mosquito spray. You know, it's still, I mean, down here in, in Texas, it's still pretty hot. And, uh, you know, mosquitoes are the size of trucks. So you want to have uh, some sort of a spray to kind of keep yourself protected. Otherwise, you're going to get eaten alive and be miserable. Uh, other things to think about, bring a little little munchies with you, some kind of munchy foods, you know, whether it's beef jerky or some kind of granola bars or you know, whatever whatever suits your fancy. And bring something to drink. And I'm not, and for the one, once, I'm not talking about beer and, and bourbon. Uh I'd say bring out some water. You know, it's going to be really hot. You're going to get dehydrated. You're going to sweat. You need to have water on you. That's an important thing, especially if you go hiking into the woods. You know, you watch some of the other guys, the other channels out there, they go hiking for a couple miles before they even set up and activate. So you're miles away from anybody, anywhere, especially your vehicle. You need to have something to keep you hydrated. So always bring water. Go down to like Academy or whatever your local sports uh, store is or even Walmart. And pick up like a 32-ounce or 48-ounce uh, thermos kind of thing that puts some cold water in or tea or, you know, whatever you want. Just bring something to have it so you stay hydrated and keep you healthy so you don't pass off from heat exhaustion or something, right? Okay, so that's pretty much all the equipment I can think of. I'm trying to – I wrote down some uh, notes here. The main thing is just go out there and have fun with this. Uh, go out there and make those contacts. You know, like I said, yesterday I had a real crap time trying to get anybody – and I learned a couple things, both about ham radio and propagation, but also I'm thinking about maybe upgrading a couple things, maybe bringing out a, a more powerful radio might make it better. I mean, I was only running on 5 watts in the 705, so maybe bring the 891 out. Unfortunately, my 891 Go Box, if you go back and watch my video on the Go Box that I built, I think it weighs like 40, 50 pounds, you know, and it's got wheels and, you know, I can drag it around, but it's just the pain of having to drag that through somewhere. I'm not sure as heck not going to drag it a mile and a half through a, through a, uh, gravel uh uh trail to uh get to my spot so you know but bringing out that larger radio with a larger power source and running 100 watts instead of 5 watts or 10 watts uh maybe i would have been a little bit more successful and that's something i've got to try it's experimentation for me based on the equipment that i have so that's my suggestions to you guys uh and that's pretty much all i got so again if you're going to get into poda parks on the air this is a quick little guide. You'll have to really go back and research. I couldn't, if I sat here and tried to tell you every little tiny thing, we'd be here for hours and nobody wants to watch all that. So go to the parksontheair.com website. I'll have all the links for everything down below, including the Hammers app. And uh, just find what's going to work for you and get out there and uh, activate those parks and have fun. Enjoy nature. Get some of that fresh air. And just get away from the monotony of the city and being at your house and being stuck in your house or whatever you, whatever your situation is. Get out there and have fun and enjoy this. Uh, I know I am, and hopefully I will see you on the air. 
Uh, I guess that's it, guys. So for, until then, uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe down below by clicking on the subscribe button and click on the little bell. That way you'll be notified when I do new videos. Remember, I also have, if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon group you can join. Links are down below as well. And I don't really talk about it too much, but if you go to the hamradiofornontechies.com website, I have a link up at the top called Shop. And in there, I've got a whole bunch of funny little T-shirts and just ham, relate, ham radio related T-shirts, stickers, mugs, bags, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to help support the channel and have some cool merch in return, go check out stuff that I create. And I've, I've you know, I create all the stuff here at the house and upload it and uh, get it ready to roll. So you guys have something awesome to wear. Uh, other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. So until then, this is Ham Radio for non-techies, and we are clear.